So, you're considering moving back in with your parents, huh? Allow me to put some of your fears to rest by giving you the inside scoop on some things that you might still be uncertain about. In this digital landscape flowing with options galore, genuinely, thank you. As we take a close look at five not so uncommon questions related to issues many of us have when we are faced with the moral, ethical, societal, and personal dilemma that is... So, whether you are excited about the idea of moving back or feel anxiety at just the thought of it, I promise you that by the end of this video, you won't feel so alone in making such a big decision. And now, let's get started with the first question that's probably on your mind. Yes. Wait, 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 wait. I'm not finished yet. In recent years, we have experienced a profound shift in our lives. One that has reshaped our future in ways that we could and could not have predicted. According to studies from the Pew Research Center and the National Bureau of Economic Research, many of us, myself included, continue to grapple with challenges of loneliness, isolation, and mental well-being. Contrary to the expectations of the past, American cultural and societal views have drastically evolved from the time of rugged individualism and self-reliance. Young adults, like you, face more complex and challenging paths in this modern age. Graduating high school, pursuing higher education, and securing a job that would become a successful lifelong career, all while dealing with sky-high rent prices, superficial dating apps, and car manufacturers offering yearly subscriptions just so you can drive your car. It's weird out here. One of the most common reasons for moving back home is financial independence. You got that job you've been working hard for. Now why throw your paycheck away on super inflated rent prices every first of the month? I know someone who did that for a two bedroom apartment and at the end of the first year's lease, they had spent a whopping small fortune of $20,000. It was time for a change. They made it their goal that if they could move back home with family, they would plan to save enough money that they could buy their own home someday. Your reason for moving back home is uniquely your own. Maybe you want to move back to take care of your elders, or maybe you need help with childcare. Perhaps you're reevaluating a career change, or maybe you just crave the comforting familiarity of home. Whatever your reasons are, it's important to remember to have an honest and open conversation with your parents. And remember, it is okay to move back home. Luxurious resorts and drones with obstacle avoidance sensors are expensive. That's why in this section, I'll discuss four pros and cons that explore the advantages and disadvantages that moving back home can bring towards making your financial dreams a reality. Moving back home can significantly reduce your monthly expenses, which means you're not financially obligated to pay things like the rent or utility bills, potentially leaving you with more disposable income to divest towards things like being able to afford ordering food delivery three out of seven days of the week, while also managing tripling credit card debt. You can create your own emergency fund, or what is more popularly referred to as a rainy day fund. To have peace of mind that you'll be able to keep yourself afloat for at least a little while, should anything happen. There is a downside to being unburdened by the weight of bills, and that is comfort. When you live with your parents and have reduced financial responsibilities, you may find yourself in a red zone, meaning that you spend just as much money that you essentially bring in. One way to combat this is to answer questions like, how do I benefit from saving money each month? And what do I want to achieve financially? In asking yourself these questions, you could find answers like, I want to save enough money each month that I could put towards repairing my car. Or, as mentioned earlier, to prioritize on a big future investment, like a house. When you have less money going out each month than you essentially bring in, you can allow yourself to begin chipping away at the stress caused by financial insecurities associated with fears like student loan debt or credit card balances. Mm. 
in order to help you with any budgeting goals that you may have. According to the microcosm of the internet, Reddit, on r slash Fugal community posts, the top three answers for a commendable budgeting app were Mint, the budget tracer, and planner, YNAB, or You Need a Budget, and Google Sheets taking the top spot. Both Mint and You Need a Budget offer monthly subscription fees, while Google is free to use. A lot of things can happen in our personal lives, like getting a flat tire on the highway on a Monday morning, or the dog you're looking after, chewing your computer or laptop charging cord. The result is having to spend a ludicrous amount of money on a brand new tire, or a suspiciously low amount of money on a brand of tire you never even heard of. One thing to keep in mind when something happens is how this event can benefit the future. Thinking more positively about the situation can help negate feelings of resentment or anger towards anyone, including yourself. For example, what if the washing machine breaks down? Or what if someone in your household wants a little extra help buying groceries? Positive thinking encourages you to look beyond the here and now. Yes, the household machine that you used to wash your clothes in is now broken, and buying a new one or even a refurbished one can cost anywhere from $100 to $1,000. But you need clean clothes, and so does everyone else in your household. And for the example about buying groceries, if the person requesting a little extra help buying groceries is also the person who occasionally cooks the meals in the household that you enjoy, why start trouble where none be had? Helping financially in a shared household can alleviate a lot of stress. And who says no to a hot meal? Let's be honest, living under the same roof as your parents is not something you immediately tell someone on a first date. When you tell someone that you live with your parents, they don't care that you may be there to help someone with a disability or that you just lost your job due to a power play made by people you have never met who have a whole lifetime's worth of more money than you. It doesn't matter what you're going through or that you've always done everything on your own before this moment. All they heard was, I'm dependent on mommy to cook and clean for me and wash my poopy underwear. Many people view the act of moving back home a sign of failure, which means that you are incapable of taking care of yourself. This can create heavy feelings of self-doubt, inferiority, low self-esteem, low self-confidence, and embarrassment, serving only to exasperate the fear of being judged because you feel pressure from society and family to meet or exceed standards that are expected of you. The important thing to remember is that everyone's path in life is different. It's also important to understand how not to take advantage of your parents' generosity and exploit their kindness for your benefit. Admitting that you need support and taking a step back to reevaluate and regain your footing is one of the most powerful things that you can do. But what is equally as powerful is recognizing and feeling grateful for the sacrifices of those who are providing support for you at this crucial moment right now. It's not realistic to assume that rocky relationships between parents and children don't exist and that everything is just perfect. But there are steps you can take to make things easier. My advice is to help your parents and or guardians as much as you're able to. This could mean taking care of tasks like regularly washing the dishes and keeping your room and other areas of the house clean to prevent any unwanted nasty pests. Making an effort to prioritize yourself while also not Disturbing pre-established routines is also helpful. Sure, it sucks if your dad does a big poopy in the morning and it gets all stinky and then you gotta wake up and walk through that. Yeah, it sucks, but he does that every morning. All your parents are really hoping for in return is to see you get better, to see you make progress. 